And um, with this radio, with everything going as well as it was, I finally found something wrong. And I found out uh, that there was a, a fault in a rather strange way. I'll show you. I'm feeding in a 1000 kilohertz signal at 300 millivolts RMS from the signal generator. I'm feeding it in with the ground to the ground tag of this uh, connector, this wire, and I've shorted the two inputs. So both inputs, left and right, of this cable are taking the same uh, 1000 kilohertz, uh, 300 millivolt signal. I've got that signal feeding in to the phono input, left and right with the ground in the middle. I'm going to set the phono input, give it a bit of time to warm up. And I think you can hear it there. Okay, I'm going to drop the volume somewhat so we can hear what we're saying. So I have the phono input connected. Volume is not that high, just enough to hear it. And I have the oscilloscope connected to this. Here's the oscilloscope connected to one of the channels. Doesn't matter whether it's left or right. I don't really know which is which on this radio. But um, as you can see, we get a fairly good signal. If I increase the volume, it goes up. Decrease the volume, it comes down. If I increase the level of the input signal, it goes up and down. It's a nice clean sine wave. Pretty low power as it is. We're only getting about uh, 0.4 volts RMS, 3.39 volts RMS at 1000 kilohertz. This is being read at the across the speaker, one of the speakers. Now I have the other channel of the oscilloscope connected to the other speaker, so I'm going to activate that now. There's the blue trace. So as you can see, it's a pretty close fit. And this means that the two output stages, both left and right, are fairly closely matched. Now watch this. What I've done is I've activated stereo. I've pushed the stereo button here so that the two signals, left and right, are no longer summed. They are separate. And what I'm getting is a much lower level on the one channel. So one channel is practically double the other. They're still responding. Both still go up if I increase the level of the signal generator or if I increase the volume. However, one is about half the other. And this got me back into the schematic to see what the hell was going on. Now, what this tells me when I activate, when I deactivate the stereo button, they come back to the same level. I'm going to lower the volume here. It's a very low level now, just to leave it there. What this tells me is that the output stages, both of them, are working fine. Because when it's in mono, I'm getting exactly the same signal coming out of both. So the left channel and out and right channel, EL84 output tubes and all the biasing circuitry around that is working fine. The problem then is from the preamp stage. So here's what I got. I've got when the uh, stereo switch is not activated, it means that these two are shorted. Now what we have here, or at this point here, we have say the left signal. Let's call the top one the left and the bottom one the right. So this is our left input from the preamp from here, from this uh, anode 
of this tube, this triode of the preamp tube. This signal comes here and that's one of our um, channels, right? Preamplified but going into the power stage. Over here we have the other one. So out of this uh, anode, this plate, it comes from there to there to there and then it goes through into this power amp uh, stage. So there's our right channel signal, there's our left channel signal. When our stereo switch is not activated, this thing is shorted. So what we're getting is exactly the same signal going here. Effectively, the two of them are summing and they, the same signal goes into the two output stages. That's why we get the two identical signals or practically identical signals. Now, when we open this, when we activate the stereo button, this switch is opened. So then the left channel comes to this point of this uh, potentiometer. The right channel comes to this point of the potentiometer and you have a stereo balance switch because this one is then shorted to ground through that capacitor and this acts as a balance between the left and right channels. So if you turn it all the way to the right, you're basically shorting this signal down to ground. So that channel goes lower than that one. If you turn this all the way to the left or down, this point gets shorted to ground through that capacitor and this channel here is very little. Most of the signal goes through there. So this tells us that um, one of these signals is not coming in or is coming in a lot lower. It could in fact not be coming in at all. Now why do I say that? Let's assume this tube is not in circuit at all. Let's take this out of the equation completely. That means we've got our left channel working, nothing coming into the right channel. How would we get a signal, a lower signal, but how would we get a signal at this point here, which we've, we've seen we do, um, albeit lower? The reason we'd get a signal here is because although this is open in stereo, this signal here, which is correct, comes in there, goes through that fixed uh, value of resistor, goes through the extremities of the potentiometer and comes into here. So effectively, one of these tubes, and we'll call that the one that's uh, having a problem, and you'll see why in a minute, because it is in fact the one that's having a problem, this tube here could be contributing some signal or no signal at all for us to get that effect that we're seeing on the scope. And this is why I went further to find out which of these triodes is not working. Now, I said earlier in a, in a previous uh, video that it's rather strange that you have two triodes. These are simple triodes. This is wired as a triode, it's, although it's got two diodes, but they're shorter to ground. So this is one triode driving the right channel. This is a triode within a, the EABC80 tube, which has another section in the previous stage. Um, the triode part is used as a preamplification. So these are different triodes, and they're actually completely different uh, structurally, because this is a self-standing triode tube. This one is actually half of a, another tube that's doing something else. Um, however, obviously, whoever designed this chose these two uh, purposely. This, this obviously came from having an extra triode on a tube that they needed in the detector stage. So that's fine. They needed another triode. So uh, instead of not using this stage in the previous tube and using a double triode tube, which I'm not sure they had in those days, they decided to use that triode and create and uh, put in a single triode tube here to do exactly the same thing for the right channel that that one's doing for the left channel. So if this thing is defective, um, you'd get nothing coming out here and you'd get something coming out there. Now the only time you will notice this is when we do exactly what I've done, which is using a stereo input, which is the phono input or the, the, the tape input. But in this case, I was using the phono input left and right. This is actually a stereo signal and therefore you would notice it because one of the, and you activate stereo here, one of the channels wouldn't be giving you a big signal or equal signal to the other. You will still get some sound coming out of there. Now it's very difficult to detect on this particular radio because although it is stereo, 
The two speakers are literally side by side, so when you listen to it, you can't really discern that one is giving a, a higher signal than the other. The only way to really do that is put your hand in front of it or measure across the speaker, but you can also put your hand in front of it and actually notice that one of them is significantly uh, less vibration than the other. So I went further and I did some measurements on here and um, I discovered that this particular triode is not working well. It's weak or actually not working at all. I think it's just weak, very weak, because at the grid of this tube, which is pin 8, I get the full signal. At the grid of this tube, which is pin 1, I get the full signal. So the stereo is coming in to the two grids. Then when I measure here or there, I measure a full signal there and only a partial signal on the other side, which could well be a weaker signal from here or alternatively this signal draining through there to that line over there. So this output is practically half what the other one is. So we have a problem with this tube. And um, as I said, it has absolutely no effect on the rest of the sound coming from the radio because normally you would run this in mono. So you would not activate the switch. So one of these uh, preamp stages is sending the signal through. Um, it's sending it to both sides driving both of these uh, output stages and you would hear perfectly well. You'd hear uh, short wave, medium wave, uh, long wave, FM, mono. You'd hear that perfectly well on both speakers because the output stages are fine. When you bring in a stereo signal and you want to activate the stereo button, that's when you start noticing that something's wrong. The first obvious uh, sign that something's wrong is that the level is slightly lower overall because one of the speakers is only working at practically um, a quarter of the power, half the voltage, uh, a quarter of the power. So that way you'd notice something's wrong. And if you really wanted to hear stereo music from, say, a, a CD player or sticking an iPod or iPhone, whatever it is you want, uh, into that input, um, you would notice that something is wrong with the music if you play it on stereo. You can always play it on mono and you... Uh, you won't really notice much except you'll be losing part of the stereo signal. So this tube needs to be replaced and um, this raises uh, a bit of a problem for me because I don't have one of these and uh, I live on an island where you don't just uh, look on the web, order it and it's there in a couple of days. This takes weeks to arrive. Uh, and I wanted to see whether I could check my hypothesis, make sure that this is in fact the problem and that I could indeed get both sides to work on stereo. So I looked at this particular tube and found that this EBC91 is a triode, if you wire it like this, it's a triode that is identical, practically identical, to half of a more modern and more available 12AX7. Okay? This EBC91 is the European designation. The American designation is a 6AV6. So it's identical to a 12 AX7 or ECC83, uh, which I do have lying around. Now, this is a 7-pin tube, very small. The 12 AX7 is a 9-pin tube. There's no way it fits. It's not pin compatible. So to test my hypothesis, I messed around and I decided to build a little rig, which is really the sort of thing that you should not do at home. Do not do this at home, okay? So what I've done here is I've, I didn't even have a pin socket to, to, to plug in there, so I had to make one. Very makeshift, extremely dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And even when you do know what you're doing, you have to be very, very careful. So what I've done is I've wired um, the, this particular wiring over here on the triode. Pin 1 is the grid. I've wired pin 1 over here to the pin 2, which is the grid of one of the, I'm only using half of this, this has got two triodes in it. So pin 2 of, um, of, this, uh, of this tube is the grid of one of the triodes. Obviously I keep to the same triode because I'm only using the one side. Um, this here, pin 7, is the anode or the plate of this tube and the plate of this one is pin 1, I believe. 
um, yeah, pin one of this tube. Um, the other one I needed to wire up was was the pin two, which is the cathode. Now pin two and pin three are actually grounded, and just to save on wires, I've shorted pin the ground of the heater on this tube to pin three or pin two, and I brought that to pin two, so I know this is uh, going to go to ground. And uh, so I've got that one, that one, that one, and then pin four is the heater voltage, 6.3 volts. Now, if you know 12AX7, what it has, it's basically got two heaters, 12 volts, 12.6 uh, volt heaters, but there's a center tap, so you can run the two in parallel. Pin 9 is the ground of those heaters, uh, which so I've shorted that to ground, and then you put 6.3 volts on pin 4 and 5, which is the, the two heaters on here. I didn't bother to find out which heater heats which triode, I just wired both of them up. This is only for testing. So I've set this up here, and what I want to do is I want to plug this into where that EBC91 is, and just check whether I get the right level on stereo coming out. If that is the case, it just confirms everything else is correct and uh, the problem is indeed the EBC91. So let's do that and see what happens. So everything is off. I'll remove this tube, which is a little bit warm. And I'm going to fit this guy in here very carefully. Right, so I've fitted that in there. My 12AX7 is in place here. Okay, I'm going to activate the light, uh, the lamp uh, reducer just in case before I switch everything on again. Light case, light box is on, and we've switched on our phono input. And I'm going to leave it on mono, mono for now. So let's look at the scope. So here we have it. And I'll drop the volume a bit. This is with mono activated, so it, we don't really know that we've done the right thing yet. Let me activate stereo. There's our stereo. Now, as you can see, this blue channel is not quite the same and there is noise as the yellow channel. So our 12AX7 is not doing exactly the same thing as the other one, but you can see that it's certainly improved situation somewhat. We've got the signal up now and um, we've basically confirmed that our problem is in the, the tube, the EBC91. Right, so the solution then, let me switch this off, I don't want to strain that too much. Solution then is to order an EBC91. Um, I think they're actually fairly easily available. Switch everything off before I forget and uh, create more problems. And then very carefully remove that from there. So that is one of the faults that's in this radio. It's uh, very easy to repair. All we need to do really is to um, order the tube. I'm going to put the old one back because I think it's still working. It's just very weak. And um, I need to order a new tube. And I'll then, because this is actually accessible from the back, it's fairly easy to, um, to replace it even with the radio closed up. And it won't uh, delay or imp impair any of the operation uh, with the radio as it is which is pretty good. These things take quite a while to arrive, so I don't want to sit here waiting with this thing open for weeks.